I would wake up to hearing the rhythmic foot slapping. I would wake up to rehearsals. We'd be in our living room. Um, I was just used to this sound all the time. It was like there would never be silence in our house. It was always filled with, with music, dance, rhythms. I was born and brought up in Los Angeles, California. And I grew up in a house that was all I knew was art. Um, Bharatanatyam, Carnatic music, bhajans, uh, North Indian, uh, Hindustani music, uh, Sufi music. This is the kind of music, the environment that was at home. Because my mother, uh, she's a prolific dancer, Vijay Prakash. Uh, she started one of the first Bharatanatyam institutions in the U.S., in Los Angeles, Shakti Dance School of Bharatanatyam in 1975, I believe. And my sister also, Maiti Prakash, one of the leading da Bharatanatyam dancers today. Music is the center of my life. It is everything I see is through music. So if I'm only seeing the beautiful and the uplifting, but at the same time, when I turn on the news, it's none of that. It's only chaos, tension, uh, division. And, and I, was, I was realizing this, my, it was my privilege that I was able to just completely blind, keep myself, keep, keep a blind eye from these messy issues. And that kind of, that kind of hypocrisy disturbed me as well as seeing the hypocrisy of, of the leaders and the political um, power politics that is happening in, in both countries I call home, the USA and India. Like it's gotten me to question this idea, this aesthetic of beauty in music. Can we shout in, in Carnatic music? Does everything have to be sung? Can, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's all these like uh, sonic questions I was, qu I was asking of myself to try to push myself and, so songs deal with isolation, deal with um, reactions and, and to, to all the hate that we saw. I would still be playing with my cars in the middle of my mom's rehearsal. I just wanted to be in that space where my mom was. And one rehearsal, um, the, the musician who was singing for my mom Debo Srivatsa, who is uh, um, actually my first vocal guru from Bangalore, he was uh, singing and he saw me just playing in the corner. And he's like, hey, Adi, are you even listening to the music? I mean, the legend goes that I, I responded saying, yeah, that's Raga Mohanam. And then everyone just like stood quiet and was shocked that this kid who, who seems like he has no clue of what's going on was able to pick up this Raga. Like many of my, my friends, when I talked to them, my Desi friends, we all kind of went through the same experience where we, we felt like an outsider and we wanted to fit in. We kind of felt embarrassed of our Indian culture when we're in the American, American social setting. I was embarrassed to share my Carnatic music with my friends because um, the few times that I did, they would just be like, what, this sounds weird, what is this? I mean, there were young kids at that age, so they don't have a filter, right? So they, it sounds different, it sounds weird. This kind of shut off this identity of Carnatic music. I, I do not want to share this with any of my friends, with any of my Western audiences. Um, this is reserved for when I go to Chennai or I perform here at a Sabah. And there became this clear distinction, like a wall built between my identities. I had been going to India for a few years, performing Carnatic concerts when I was about 13, 14, 15. And Pandit Ravi Shankar, I used to call him Guruji, um, he lived in Encinitas, California, which is not far from Los Angeles. And the Indian classical community in the US is, is quite closely in it. So everyone knows each other. Word had gone about that I'm singing really well, I'm doing concerts. 
And so he's someone who really encourages young artists. And he, um, when I was about 15, he called my parents and asked them if I could prepare like a 20 to 30 minute um, set, a little concert at his house, just an informal gathering. He, I went there um, and I suddenly got quite nervous because there was an audience. Uh, there was like some uh, legendary North Indian uh, Hindustani musicians there. There was... Um, there was American people there. There was a, like a diverse audience. I've never performed for such a diverse audience. And um, I was nervous. I, 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 I was, it was a daunting task to perform in front of Ravi Shankar. He was so engaging. He was so warm, humble. He was smiling. He was showing his appreciation. One thing that opened my eyes when I was performing with Pandit Ji was the kind of audience that was we were performing to at his concerts we perform at carnegie hall hollywood bowl disney hall all these venues that aren't typically associated with indian classical music um, i was seeing a lot of <laughs> to put it bluntly white people in the audience um, i saw how he collaborated with jazz he w with western musicians and he, at the whole time he retained his identity um he didn't dilute it or sacrifice it and that's something that kind of it sat with me, it sat in my brain. And also this, I, I think, as I realize now, the desire to be accepted in the Western eye and to be um, have my music underst understood by my American friends kind of was also partially a reason why I was, I, I wanted my music to communicate in a way that would be relatable. I was performing with Anushka Shankar around the time I was performing with, with Pandit Raviji and we toured all over Europe that was an amazing experience, but I was starting to like accept that I can be cool and be a, a classical musician. And it's these small little experiences. When I went to college, I went to UCLA for an ethnomusicology degree. I was around uh, my roommates and and my best friends at the time were jazz musicians. And we found a lot of similarities in the ideologies. And then um, naturally we just started practicing together. We started uh, trying things and, and we found such a, a special space where and it came out through improvisation with both, with both forms. And that experience when I was able to perform at a jazz club with my own music and see my friends there nodding their heads and like having a great time and like really understanding the music, connecting to the music. It was like a, a whole new high for me. And I felt like I'm starting to get closer. My identities are starting to get closer. Yes, I still knew that there was a strict difference between Carnatic and what I was doing in my ensemble. It was, there were two world, worlds that I still kept apart, but I did feel like my identity was somewhat, I was becoming more proud to share my, my music. <laughs> 